John chapter 14, verses 8 through 9. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And in response to Philip, Jesus says, Have I been with you so long, and yet you still do not know me, Philip? He who has seen the Father has seen me. Your proximity to Jesus is very important. It is important to be close to Jesus. It's important to be close to his word. It's important to be close to him in prayer. It's important to be close to him in every aspect of our lives. But to have a relationship with Jesus is just as important as your closeness to him. To love Jesus is to truly know him. As it was seen in Judas, the rich young ruler, Philip, and even Jesus' siblings. You can be close to Jesus, even standing in his presence, and still miss him. It's like going on a date with your loved one, but the entire time you're on your cell phone. They're trying to talk to you. They're trying to love on you. They're trying to give you an experience that you've never felt before. But the entire time, you're not paying them any mind. See, physically, you're present, but mentally and emotionally, you are checked out. And when it comes to our relationship with God, you cannot be physically present with God and spiritually checked out. Let me say that one more time. You cannot be physically present with God and spiritually checked out. There are times throughout a relationship when your loved one wants you to do something that you do not want to do. You do not want to go grocery shopping with them because you know they are so indecisive and they take such a long time. They take forever. Or you don't want to watch that romantic comedy movie because you know it's corny. They can't even act for real. They're terrible actors, hallmark actors. But yet we do these things anyways, not because we have to, not because they're forcing us or holding a gun to our heads and making us do it against our will. We do it because we love them. It's purely out of love why we do what we do for our loved ones even when we don't want to do it. Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 says not to grow weary of doing what is good, for in due season you will reap a harvest, if and only if we don't give up. The scripture doesn't say you won't get tired, but it says don't get tired. Trust me when I say this, there will be days where you don't feel like praying. You don't have the words to say. It feels as if you're just talking to yourself and nobody's listening. You feel as though your prayer is lacking in faith and belief. And there's gonna be days when you don't feel like reading scripture. You're gonna be too tired, too exhausted. The scriptures, they're not hitting like they did on Monday and Tuesday. They're not inspiring you like it did on Wednesday. The chapter that you're reading doesn't make any sense. You can't seem to figure out how the verses that you're reading applies to your life. And it almost feels as though you're wasting God's time. If you continue to pursue after God's heart, even on those days, the days when you feel like you can't, the days when you feel like you don't have the strength, the days where it feels as if God is nowhere to be found, then you better trust and believe that there will be a harvest waiting for you. One of the biggest struggles that we face in our walk with Christ is that we all want to have a relationship with God, but we do not want to maintain that relationship with God. It's easy to pray and dance and sing for the Lord on a Sunday, but it's a lot harder to maintain that relationship with God Monday to Saturday. I want you to think of it like this. It is not enough to have a lot of money because you can have a lot of money and still not be rich. If I have a lot of money, but I cannot maintain that amount of wealth, it does not mean that I'm rich. It just means I'm a poor man with a lot of money. And the same goes as this. If I, being a sinner, have a relationship with God, but cannot maintain it, it does not mean that I am saved. I am just a sinner who had an encounter with Christ, who refused to receive the love and mercy that God had in store for me. No different than Judas. Have you ever talked to someone and you've only had a couple conversations with them? You guys never been on a date, you never spent time together, and you've never had a moment of intimacy. But for some odd reason, all it took was for a couple conversations to be had, for this person to now go and tell everyone that you guys go together, that you guys are in some type of relationship. And now you're left sitting there wondering how could somebody be so delusional to think that only a couple conversations equates to us being in a relationship. This is exactly how the world views us when we talk about having a relationship with Christ, but doing absolutely nothing to maintain it. We're never actually spending time in prayer. We're never actually spending time in the word. And we never truly have moments of intimacy with Christ. And yet we want the world to believe that we have a relationship with him. How delusional have I been? In order to claim a relationship with Christ, we must first need to maintain a relationship with him. It's not enough to have a relationship with God, but we need to maintain it as well. Through prayer, through scripture, through time and availability, through serving, any way that you can maintain a relationship with God, do it. 
but we need to maintain it as well. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying to his disciples, in order to have relationship with me, you need to come to me first. You need to submit to me first. You need to believe, you need to trust, and you need to have faith in me first. Then in John chapter 14, verses 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is not a verse that you just glance over, that you put in the bio of your Instagram, that you use as a caption on your Instagram post, but these are words of instructions. Jesus is instructing you on how to maintain a relationship with him. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he tells you how to have a relationship with him. In John chapter 14, verse 15, he's instructing you now on how to maintain a relationship with him. It's not enough to just have a relationship with Christ, but you need to be maintaining it. Maintaining it on the Monday mornings, on the Tuesday mornings, on the Wednesday mornings, on the Thursday afternoons, on the Friday nights, on the Saturday nights, and on the Sunday mornings. Every day and night, we need to be maintaining our relationship with Christ. And you may not know what maintaining looks like, then let me tell you, pray without ceasing. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Seek first after the kingdom of God. Keep the word of God hidden in your heart that you might not sin against him. Meditate on the word. Spend time in the word. And keep the commandments of God. That is how you maintain relationship with Christ. Is by living according to his word.